I had a client recently that wasn't sure if the, if the top producer quote unquote was producing and they didn't have plans and procedures and this and that. So I said, you know, bring the pressure to bear of God on this person. And they were afraid to do that for fear they might quit. But you see what happens with the top producer. If you bring a lot of pressure to them, if they quit, guess what? They're not a top producer. And he brought the pressure to bear on this person and this person quit. And I said, you're better off without them. I was thinking of it and just for future edification, go ahead and bring lots of pressure to bear on salespeople who you're unsure about and you'll force them to quit and you're saving yourself six months of crap uh, for somebody who doesn't really produce. Go ahead and bring lots of pressure because a top producer will just rise to the occasion and a lightweight will crumble and get him out of there. Let him go. Welcome to your weekly dose of the ultimate sales machine. I am your host, Amanda Holmes, CEO of Chi. The next few episodes are a series of real live questions from business owners and executives just like you. You still have the opportunity to get your ticket of the ultimate sales machine boot camp to help you redefine that stadium pitch, build out your dream 100 campaign and set in place the momentum to be able to double your sales over the next 12 months. Visit USM, like ultimate sales machine, dot Chet Holmes dot com forward slash bootcamp. That's USM dot Chet Holmes dot com forward slash bootcamp. Okay, here's the episode. Yep. I have a question for Chet going on what we were talking about this morning. Um, when you have a potential superstar employee and you said that you have them send you five questions. Bring them for the interview. That they would... Do you have them bring them to the interview? So you don't read them beforehand at all? No, I have them bring okay. them to the interview right. and then I look, read them to see how good they are. And if they look interesting, I ask them, but and I don't what, always what, ask them. What would you qualify as being a good question? Things that um, connotate performance. Give an example. Like um, you asked me to write the five questions that would show my best side, which is how you put it to the superstar. I'd say, um, why have you been top producer every place you ever worked? You know, questions like that, that would force you to get out of me. What do you understand about, about the selling process that nobody else understands? Yeah, that's a great one. How in the world, what's, what's the key to getting into an executive's mind? What's a, what are the 15 overlooked factors that, that, um, that bring any buyer to a positive decision or things like that? Those are better questions than anybody's ever given me. <laughs> he got the job. Well, I'll tell you what, just to give you an example, I, I taught not as disciplined as Chet, but I taught my kid, Brian, who you met, I think, once at yeah. 34, how to do this, and he's gotten every job he's ever heard of before because he has better questions than anyone ever had. He just and he interviews the heck out of me. He's a grad school interviews him. He's really good. He has tons of good questions, and he, 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 and he can answer them well. Okay. There's a question, uh, it would be primarily Jeff, but I want you to a- add in there. Hey, so we, yesterday you had that interview with, I think her name was uh, Beverly, right? Was it? Now she obviously, as we talked about, might be kind of a handful, you know, as far as managing. But you also mentioned earlier today or yesterday that when you have a superstar, you want to put just push as much to them if they're producing and making it happen and try to, you know, leverage things towards them. Okay. To what point do you draw the line at trying to work her with, if, as long as, they, let's say they're just a super producer but they're kind of a handful. To what point do you give a little extra? I put know? up with amazing stuff for top producers, I'll tell you. I put up with almost anything for somebody who can sell and close, I'll tell you right now. But, you know, you got you to you draw the line so of moral, moral yeah. ethical stuff, but you're talking yeah, exactly. about great. You're talking about okay, let's, well, let's say it's not moral ethical. Let's just say with working within uh, company policies. Let me, give you, let me give you an example. Anybody who's ever worked with me as a client knows that I'm basically like a mad scientist. I don't want to work when they want to work. I don't want to do what they want to do. And, and people put up with me. We talked, I was talking to Drew Kaplan about it because hey. they know the outcome, not the process, but the outcome. So, I mean, sometimes it, it, it depends if you're willing to. Now, Terry, I mean, if I was going out and closing 15 doctors a week and getting them as high producers for you, and it was like clean a and done right. nightmare. And as long as I was ethical, you know you're going to put up with just If I didn't do my that. paperwork, you could hire someone to do my paperwork. If I didn't do my, um, my like, if I wasn't on all the sales calls. You like call, to do call reports or, you know, you won't give a 
Blind and blue. But but that that does Chet that you got you got to you got to show the relevancy because that falls uh, askance from the concept of systems, discipline, etc. So how do you reconcile the two? And let me just throw in something. Now you've got other people in the company that are seeing. Oh, aren't you bending a little bit here too much? And so, and here's what you say: You say, you know what? You're bringing me 15 deals a week. I'll bend with you too. Okay. How about if it's other administrative, accounting person, a different not other salespeople, but the other parts of the company that are don't see things that way necessarily. I mean, they, they don't. I'll give like you an I answer. Said, I'll give you an you answer. Know, is the person they, a really high producer? Are you referring to someone specifically? Well, no, I just, I just want to. I, if I mean, you had a person who's a really high producer, I, I just get you could probably. Go, I'm, I'm not in not agreement. I'm just saying it's a valid because. Huh? What's the person's name? Him? Yeah. Terry. Yeah. That's what I thought. No, I just couldn't remember. It's it, Terry. What you could do is if the person's that high a producer, hire a part time PA for him and have them do all the stuff for him so they are in compliance. No, then you would really piss off everybody else. Yes. Well, you know the you know the situation. So, but anyway, yeah. I just want to see kind of forever because we're yeah, hiring I more. Put up, like, I put up with a lot of crap for a top producer. Really? Let I'll me tell, tell you what: in the real estate business, the high producers ended up hiring all kinds of support people to take yeah, well, all they, things that didn't do well. The situation they're talking about, they're not at that level yet, but they probably will be. I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, but I want to say another thing too. I had a client recently that wasn't sure if the if the top producer, quote unquote, was producing, and they didn't have plans and procedures and this and that. So I said, you know, bring the pressure to bear of God on this person. And they were afraid to do that for fear they might quit. But you see what happens with the top producer. If you bring a lot of pressure to them, if they quit, guess what? They're not a top producer. And he brought the pressure to bear on this person and this person quit. And I said, you're better off without them. I know it's a completely apples and oranges. I know it is. It's it's just, my, I was here, thinking right? of it and just for Short. future edification. Go ahead and bring lots of pressure to bear on salespeople who you're unsure about, and you'll force them to quit, and you're saving yourself six months of crap uh, for somebody who doesn't really produce. Go ahead and bring lots of pressure because yeah, a top producer will just rise to the occasion, and a lightweight will crumble and get him out of there. Let him go. Darren. If, if, if all of our uh, Sorry, marketing is, not Darren. is focused at uh, the client, at, at the audience, how do we make sure that we're still working on brand awareness without just being a logo and just the name on all the ads? Um, well, all well, that uh, all all work adds to brand awareness. No, I mean, it's, it's, if you realize that the more distinctive the company is in their mind and heart, the more that's brand awareness, awareness, baby. Yeah. That's yeah. brand loyalty, it's a very brand awareness. Brand. I mean, it's just part of an extension of the whole of the whole. In other words, as a parent, you want to be seen in a distinctive role, don't you? It's just, it's, it's, I, mean, it's, I don't think it's any different. And it's funny, back to your question, Terry. As you asked that question, my brain's just flying through all the top producers I've put up with and all the crap I've put up with them. And I said to David the other day, you should have this problem of, a, you know, someone who closes 10 deals a week. Hi. And so the idea is to basically try to stay as close to being on topic as possible. We post to approximately 100,000 to 500,000 different visitors or potential visitors every day, and we rarely get a complaint. Rarely. Are, are you posting as a, a representative from your company, or are you pretending you're a user out there that's just kind of casually interested in your product, uh, kind of under? We don't pretend that we're, we don't. You don't pretend uh, anything. We don't pretend anything. Honestly, no. I mean, it's just a matter of exposing our URL, telling them exactly what they can get there. But we don't say that this is a, that we are a user or a member website. or anything else. No, we just post as we just post. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a service that they want to if they want to avail themselves of it. Exactly, it's not covert whatsoever. Yeah, great. Sure. I mean, that's actually so applicable to, to you, Jeffrey. We even talked about that. You could have wherever you sign up a new doctor, you could go into uh, clubs in that community and post like crazy about the food allergy testing and drive leads to that doctor. I mean, that would be like another service David Dean could offer. You want to ask some questions to qualify before you start. You want to ask questions that, you know, so you discover everything you need to know before you open your mouth to talk about what it is that you're going to sell. And you should have those questions really, you know, very well laid out. Um, and that is in the first PEQ really well. So maybe you can quickly go grab seven steps to every sale and read that. 
because it says there should be, you know, six to 10 questions you ask in every single situation before you open your mouth to sell. And those questions are, you know, very specific to finding out the weaknesses they have that you're going to be able to fulfill when you open your mouth. So you'd say, well, what are you finding are the, you know, just a, a general consensus, gentlemen, before we begin, what would you say are the challenges that you have in the area that you do? But that's a great question. You always want to ask them what their challenges are, because then they're going to say, and you don't right then and there jump on those answers. That's a big mistake people make who have not the seasoning thing of the sa sales thing is someone will say, well, my biggest challenge is that, you know, sometimes these meetings can meander and the minute you hear that, you know what the answer is and you go, yeah, well, we can really help that. Yeah, well, meandering, we can really help. And don't say a word, just write down all their things. And then when you go in through your core story, which you already have somewhat developed and you just keep asking questions and gathering and gathering and gathering. And then when you go through your core story, you bring them up and you say, who said that? Cause you're doing this by phone. I want to get their names. Who said that? That was Bill. And you write Bill's name next to it to so say, as Bill was saying before, that is a challenge. Uh, when we get around to this, you'll see how that can be easily solved, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's great. And, and, and it shows that you heard them, but they can also ask, you know, ask, you know, you can ask questions who, who's going to ultimately have to make the decision. You can ask that question. Absolutely. And you can what's say, what's the, the criteria? Process? Yeah, what's the process? What's the criteria? You know, how long does it take? What information do you need? Exactly. Every you know, sales call. What, what, what do you ask of other companies? What are the criteria? What are the basis that you tend to be looking for right now? You don't have to pay. I mean, a lot of people think it's a blind audition. Yeah, like they can't ask those questions. You can ask anything you want. That shows authority, certainty, confidence, a far level of understanding than the competition. And a leadership capacity, don't you think? Absolutely. Which is I what they're buying in anyhow, which is leadership. Does that help? Good. Okay. Mike? Businesses. What do we do with the 80% or 90% of our salespeople who maybe are not uh, superstar caliber? Do we try to bring them along after they see this new core story, or do we just start looking for superstars? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Yeah, I would... Um... The core story will make them better, right? You train and you've got to train them because it may be. Constant training will make them better. It may be because you can't fault them for being in the role you put them in. What you can do is, is uh, determine how much greater they can rise to the occasion, don't you think? Then you put a couple of sharks in the water and watch how those minnows speed up real fast all of a sudden. Okay. Okay, you're welcome. I'm serious. We had a uh, newspaper client and they had this philosophy where before they would hire anybody, like six people in the sales pool had to interview them and all six had to agree on how to hire them. So you take a guy like me who come into an interview like that and four out of six of them would find a reason why not to like me. You know what I mean? And so they ended up hiring the most milk toast, agreeable, uh, non-threatening people you could ever imagine. And there's that, that company I mentioned where the sales kept dropping by $1 million per year. So the second thing we did after turning the attitudes around was get rid of the lightweights and bring in some heavy hitters. You know, so when you put some guys in, same thing with Ball, he had one guy who was just a management nightmare and he had to put up with them all the time and he put a top producer in there and now the guy is coming down. He's little by little becoming more manageable, not quite as cocky as he was because there's another guy in there out selling him. And some of the things that we were trying to implement, this new guy just embraced him immediately versus the old people who've been there for 10 years. They, you know, they're very resistant to it. The new person, you just teach him this is the way we do it now, and he just took off with it. So he dragged the whole, you know, a high tide raises all ships. He dragged the whole sales crew with him as into the new paradigm, gold service and blah, blah, blah. One thing that really occurred to me about doing workshops, uh, one of the things I've noticed over the over a period of time with a bunch of people in your employee, normally there gets to be personnel problems and contests between people and so on. And I think using the workshops is going to have a real big side benefit of having people cooperate better, work together, become more empathetic with each other's uh, points of view, and uh, perhaps you'll end up with a lot less people problems. Uh, would, you, would you agree with that? You guys have been doing the workshops. It really does bring the troops together. It really does animate the team with the same spirit throughout all their rank. It really does. You want to get it to be nine out of ten or ten out of ten, but you're going to broaden your market a lot more. Getting more leads, salespeople. Need more leads. You need more leads. Yeah, we need more super salespeople. Well, you need leads, but it sounds like that. I mean, if you got eight out of ten, 
the most you're going to get into is 10 out of 10, which yeah. are 9 out of 10, but that's not the big leverage. No, we need leads. Mm -hmm. that, you need leads. Great, that's so one of the things I would do is, is hit on some of these other scenarios. I would say, I mean, I would, I would talk, I mean, I would do direct mail. I would do, right. you know, I would do seminars. I would get the, I mean, is there any insurance advantage? Yeah. Well, yeah, because they get a discount on their insurance. I policy. get all the insurance yeah. companies to invite you guys to speak at a luncheon that you guys most mm, didn't pay for. Hard. I mean, you get well, 40, one of the things I didn't say, 40% of our business is schools, too, nationwide. And we do 11,000 of them nationwide. So we, we put on one of the things we're going to do when we get back is put on a big seminar, invite every school superintendent and pay for a guy that's a whiz bank security consultant for schools from Florida to come out. One of the things also you can do, you realize something, you're paying for such big residual value that you can do a lot. I mean, that there's, you know, you know what the drip system is? I call it the Chinese positive laundry or the Chinese positive water, water torture. You can get all, the take schools. Let's say you got 5,000 del deliriously satisfied schools. I go through the whole system and find the 10 or 15 that have experiential scenarios that are so powerful. Get them to agree to sign a letter that explains it, give you the right to drop that letter from your, um, from your uh, office and, in day one, I get a letter from the head of the president of the unified school system in Sacramento. Day two, I get a letter from the from the security chief in the in the uh, in the in the uh, Tennessee Valley, you know, Valley School System. And I just say, talk about we had a break in. They caught him in three minutes. We had a break in. They caught him this. We had the other system. It didn't work. So you we already have those letters. Yeah. But you have like them the way Jay's makes sense. It doesn't. Okay. okay, but it doesn't make sense. Does it, it makes a lot of sense. Now is your opportunity to join the Ultimate Sales Machine Bootcamp, and it's almost up. So make sure that you visit usm.chetholmes.com forward slash bootcamp. That's USM, like Ultimate Sales Machine, usm.chetholmes.com forward slash bootcamp to secure your seat. Question, would you like to get up to nine times more clients from the same moves you're already making? Would you like to understand a step-by-step -step process that has assisted a quarter million businesses to grow? Would you like to see how that proven timeless process gets adapted when AI is involved? Have you tried to deploy a Dream 100 and you missed the momentum or never quite reached the potential you knew you could? Now is your chance to make that change. The trajectory of your life can be altered and has been altered by those that have come to this boot camp. Somebody that buys a course, only 3% of them actually finish. That's really pathetic. That's not even tracking actual results, it's just attendance. So for our boot camp, 42% of our past attendees have generated leads within 30 days learning what they learned. So if you need more leads, this is the place to be. And 30% of them have generated more sales within the first 30 days using what they learned. It is a jump start. It's only one hour a week if you want. And then there's an additional 30 minutes open for Q&A and practice. So everything that you're building and you're creating, you can test with the group and get live feedback. I would love to see you there. usm.chetholmes.com forward slash bootcamp.